Hello, this is Tofan Trifle Productions with another Blender Quick Tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show everyone how to create cobwebs fairly easily in Blender with this add-on. Uh, it's not a uh, generator like the other ones that we've seen or that are online. This is uh, basically just an add-on that makes cobwebs. And I'll leave a link of it in uh, the description below the video. And it's just the same process when it comes to the installation once you've uh, downloaded it onto your system. To install it in Blender, just go to Edit, Preferences, uh, click on Install, and then navigate to where you've installed it on your system and click on Install Add-on. I've already done that, so I don't need to do it again. And then once it has been installed in Blender, let me type it in. Cob, oh. Cob, just put a check in the box there and it activates it. And it's pretty straightforward, but you have to watch out for a, a few things uh, since I've been testing it. Uh, these are a few pointers you can like look out for so you can come across any kind of frustration. And the first thing is you can't use the default cube to generate the uh, the cobwebs. I don't know why that is, but I've tried to use the default cube and it doesn't work. So we're going to delete that. And another thing is when you generate, before you generate the cobweb at all, make sure you activate the enable viewport rendering. For some reason when this is not activated, it doesn't generate the cobwebs. I don't know if that's a bug or what it is, but that's what's been happening to me. So click on the checkbox just to be safe rather than being sorry in the answer. Let's left click on that. And now we're going to create a place where the cobweb is going to be generated. I'm going to press shift A on my keyboard mesh and plane and then from this plane I'm going to go to edit mode by pressing tab I'm going to click on the edge select mode and left click on this edge activate my move gizmo and left click and drag on the z-axis oh sorry about that control z first extrude it by pressing E on your keyboard and left click to accept that selection or that uh, operation and left click and drag on the z-axis and I want the cobweb web to kind of hang from the top. So I'm going to extrude it from the top also by pressing E on my keyboard again. Left click to accept that uh, operation. And left click and drag on the Y axis to pull that out. Now we have something for our cobweb to hang from or exist in. And I'm going to get out of it by pressing tab. And then to activate the cobwebs, just paint inside of your mesh. So click, left click on paint, and then left click and just just hold down your left mouse button. You can just draw whatever pattern you want. I'm just gonna do something like this in here, and you can make as many squiggly lines as you want. It's your choice. And once you you're done creating all these squiggly lines that you want the cobweb to uh, be generated from. Uh, the next thing to do is press enter or space, which is the instructions at the top here. I'm going to press enter. And that's our cobweb. And you have all these parameters here that you can use to adjust uh, the way your cobweb, the way you want it to look. But keep in mind, this is also going to help you just to avoid frustration in the future, is whatever adjustments you make from these parameters after you've made your adjustments click on regenerate last painted and that's going to apply those adjustments from here to your cobweb and I'll show you what I mean by this now let's uh, kind of go through all of them uh, the initial point count I guess that determines how many uh, points that you'd want uh, the cobweb to generate from Right now it's at 150. Let's bump it up to 155. I don't think it'll make much of a difference, but let's just do that. Let's see what it does. 155. Regenerate last painted. And it changes it a little bit, which looks good. Uh, shorter connection attempt. I don't know what that means, but uh, let's see. First round connections try to get closer than closer this amount of times. Hmm. Let's see what that does. Let's bump this up to, let's say, 10. And regenerate last painted. Oh, that really, I guess it, it brings it closer to whatever uh, surface it's coming from, which makes it look less. We don't want that. We want it to 
don't be much more. If this is what you're looking for, this is fine. But I want more cobwebs in, in, the, in the scene. So I'm going to reduce this down back to one. And then we get that back. Uh, second connection. Let me see. Pull this out. Second Secondary connection distance. I guess that clumps the webs together more. Let's increase that. Let's see what that does. Regenerate last. Okay. It clumps it together. That's what I was assuming it would do, which looks pretty good. Uh, gravity. Let's see what that does. Let's increase the gravity a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Click on that. See that that's cool because what because cobwebs they don't this the uh, cobwebs themselves aren't just straight and rigid sometimes sometimes they just especially when they start collecting dusts and elements in the air they start to get weighted down which is what this is simulating so that looks pretty cool uh, strand subdivision I think what this does is going to subdivide the uh, individual cobwebs more to give it a, a bit of a smoother look so let's increase uh, the subdivision let's see what that does but remember uh, if you increase subdivision it's going to make it it's going to cause your it could cause blender to lag but let's see what it does okay so it makes it look more realistic too so it, it doesn't lag that much at all and that's that's impressive and the smooth step set that makes the cobwebs smooth smoother rough Let's increase, increase that a little bit. Let's see what that does. Okay. So the more you kind of change the parameters here, the more of a realist, realistic looking result you get, which is cool. Now, you would want to be careful with this because what this does is it makes the individual webs thicker or thinner. And if you make them too thick, they're going to look just ridiculous. And I'll show you what I mean by this. Right now it's at 0 0.0003. So we're going to increase this. And watch what happens. This happens. So we don't we don't want a clump of you know gray mesh here. So we're going to reset that left or right click and go to reset to default value, and that brings that back to the original uh, parameter setting, and that looks good. Now the next step we want to do the next test, which is what I always do, is I want to see if we can export this mesh. Uh, out of Blender as an away front object, so we can use it in a different uh, version of Blender or in a different application like 3ds Max or Maya. And so we're going to apply all the modifiers. And uh, let me see, I've already done a tutorial on this particular setup here, and I'll leave a link of that or a thumbnail so you guys can see what that looks like. But once this has been activated, you can apply all the <coughs> excuse me, all the all the uh, modifiers all at once because it's got like at least three or four about two modifiers in it so we're gonna click on apply all and that applies all the modifiers that the mesh is using and we're going to leave this highlighted because we want to export just the cobweb itself and not the frame itself is what I'm, I'm wanting to do so I'm gonna go to edit actually I'm gonna go to file export uh, wavefront object and selection only. I'm going to save it on the desktop. I'm going to call this cobweb. Cobweb export where your front object. And I'm going to close this out. Don't save. And I've got Blender 2.79. And by the way, uh, the version I'm using for the cobweb add on, I think only works in this version of Blender. I'm using. Uh, let me see. It's gonna be 2.81. Yeah, 2.81. Now this is an old version of the add-on, and the developer might have. They think they've actually improved it, but I, and I'll leave a link for the add-on uh, for download for this add-on below this video, and you can just see which version it's been upgraded to. But I'm using 2.81 at this time. And I've exported it as wave from, for wavefront object, and I'm wanting it to be imported into Blender 2.79, which is what this is. Uh, so let's see if that's going to work. Let's delete this default cube, and I'm going to go to File, uh, Import. Let's see wavefront object, and I'm going to navigate to where I've saved that, which is on the desktop. Left click on that, and here it is. 
import and let's see and there it is yeah so yeah that's cool so now I can use this as an OBJ object OBJ wavefront object in any version of Blender that I want or in 3ds Max or in Maya so yeah this is a pretty good add-on does a really great job of creating cobwebs in Blender the easy way and once again thank you guys and I hope this was helpful for those of you who have been watching and thank you guys who have subscribed in the past those of you who are, are subscribing now and those of you who will subscribe in the future, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.